Welcome back to the Fox's Den. I'm Roxanne and this is one of my adventures. In this video, I am going to be talking about my thoughts, my opinions, my comments about all the facts that I shared in the previous video. I think I won't get to everything because I'm only focusing on four things for this. There may be a part two. It depends upon the questions that have been coming in. And okay, I'm going to get started. All right, I wanna start with number one, which is having a backup plan. So this is for all my teacher friends, and this is just for parents in general. I am sure your schools are on some type of hybrid schedule. Now, if they're not, and it's five days a week, that is rare, and that's fine, you're covered, almost. There's going to be a time where we're going to have to shut down because of an outbreak. So if an outbreak comes in your classroom, the children and the uh, teacher will have to be quarantined for 14 days. Um, you'll have to work from home. The children will have to. And they can't go anywhere. They literally have to be quarantined at home with their families. So parents, if you find that um, you're in that situation, you should already have a backup plan for that. One of the things I strongly suggest for everybody to look into, regardless if you're a teacher or whatever job you hold, is the COVID-19 leave. Look that up. The COVID-19 leave, I'm not going to tell you all the details because it's lengthy, but it's an option for you. And you can use having to take care of somebody because of a quarantine as one of the reasons your employer can allow you to use this. And it doesn't have to be every day. It can even be intermittent. And it's like 80 hours worth of time. So look into that. Of course, there's also the family leave and things like that. I know that can become a burden because of only two-thirds of your pay. Or if it's the other leave, you won't have health care. I know all that. But try the COVID-19 first. Look it up and have that in mind. Get those things set up. Have that conversation with your employer. Say, look. God forbid, I, I am not anticipating that this will happen, but just in case it does, if my child, because my child's going back to school, if my child is going back, since my child is going back to school, and if there's a quarantine situation, I want to be able to use the COVID-19 plan. A lot of employers don't know anything about it. Look it up. Have the conversation with your employer and also have a conversation with your doctor. Okay, in case you need any kind of documentation. So a backup plan is needed. Also, for those of you who are going on a hybrid schedule, you're going to need someone to watch your children anyway. Okay. All right, that's number one. Number two, all right, I hear a lot of parents saying, and even the governor of New Jersey said he heard a lot of educators and parents saying that online learning is just not as of course, it's not as good as it being in person, but almost like it wasn't good at all. You have to understand, what do you mean by it? We don't have a, we didn't have a plan for online lear learning. That was crisis mode teaching. That's all that that was. I didn't even have my supplies that I needed for fourth marking period because we thought we were going back. I Everything I needed for the few weeks we would be out for the end of the third marking period, but nothing for fourth marking period. None of my literature books, nothing I needed for social studies. Some of the children didn't even, who forgot to take home their social studies book. So, you know, this was all of us. There was no schedule. Everybody wanted to teach at 10 o'clock. Well, if you're at the high school, how can you all be teaching at 10 o'clock? And your child has like six, seven classes. That's not going to work. So it, it's, it's, it's no, there's no comparison. I can't find my words, I'm sorry. Um, what I'm trying to say is what would you, what you would see in September, if we had to go virtually would not be the same thing that you saw in the spring. Also, some teachers didn't even have the equipment that they needed, the computer, the Wi-Fi. So, I mean, you know how they were saying that children didn't have it. Teachers didn't have it either. So, um, that is why it would be very different. So you're comparing apples and oranges. Yes, I know there's parents going to be saying, oh, they need the socialization. I'm not covering that today. That's part two. All right, next, number three, why masks are so important. I covered some of this in the previous video. Let me just cover this quickly. I don't want to hear about conspiracy theories. I'm just going to talk about the sciences that are out there that we are using. Um, it's an aerosol virus. 
it is airborne. If you are in a combined space like mine, um, will be uh, 14 by 16 with me and probably 12 plus kids or 12 plus people all together, um, and you're not wearing a mask, even when you're wearing a mask and you sneeze or those droplets, because a mask is not 100%, it still will expel some of the droplets and they're floating around the top of the classroom. They rise, they float, and they move the length of the room and they linger for about six hours, okay? Average of six hours. You must have MERV, MERV 13 filters because they're woven in such a way that those tiny droplets they get, okay? You must also have a fresh air exchange that can circulate in the building within the hour and circulate out the whole building if need be. That's part of the deep cleaning. You must have those things. Even with those things in place, if you do not have a mask on, you are magnifying your chances of spreading and catching the virus. A lot of people out there say, oh, children don't really get it. They're asymptomatic. They do get it, and they do share it. And they do spread it, is what I should say, not share it. And hello, you've got a hundred, every day, a hundred, about a hundred adults will be in that building. Okay? What about them and their health? And if I go down, the whole room is quarantined. Okay? So, masks are important. Masks should be mandatory, not a suggestion. You want your school district to mandate it. If it gives your child anxiety, that stinks. If, if your child has asthma, that stinks. You're going to need to keep your children home. And I know that stinks. But what's better is a child that's at home, not super happy with school and their education. Okay, instead of sending your kid and either them getting sick or them making someone else sick or worse, killing them which brings me to preschool and the lower grades. They're not gonna wear a mask. They're gonna make it fall off, go back on, touch it. It's, gonna, it's going to be a mess. So you do see the outcome of this. And what's going to happen is they're going to be reprimanded. All children, all students will be reprimanded if they're not wearing their masks properly or when they should be. And with that said, in preschool, they have to do something like an up and out. All the children will have to leave and they'll have to deal with the child that's having the meltdown or not wearing the mask or acting out or spitting. So there's your whole disruption of the day. Same with kindergarten. Um, children that have that are emotionally disabled, that will happen to them. Up and out, they do on a, you know, on a regular like schedule, no pandemic. And they're gonna have to do an up and out. And I've had teachers who work with um, emotionally disabled children and don't forget, I have this in my family. I have autism in my family, and I also have um, neurologic disorders and cerebral palsy. So I know all about the mask and the behavior issues. But we have that, and we're like, that's torture for those kids in that tiny little space. It's going to stress them out more. They already don't know how to work with their emotions. That's why they're in school, to learn how to work with their emotions. They're going to act out more. They're not going to wear the mask. And then there's going to have to be this whole up and out, and where are they going to go, and all of that stuff. So that is why I say, and I don't say it to be cruel, I, I want your child to come to school. I want my children, all my students to be there. I would love that. But it's safety first, then education. Keep that in mind, okay? So people are like, oh, it's not mandated. Yeah, I could send my child without a mask. Uh-uh. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right, next, number four. Small group instruction. I'm leaving on a really happy note with this. Oh, it broke my heart to know I can't do small group instruction which and guided reading because we have to be six feet apart. And like I said, if I have two rows, I'm going to be 12 feet apart from my kids. So how in the world do you do it? Well, guess what? I was thinking this. Why? And that was not my idea. My friend, Susan, she, she suggested it. Why don't you practice what they're going to have to do if they go virtual? And that is using Google Meet or Zoom. Wow, I'm going to use Google Meet because that's what I feel is safest and everything's run through Google. So I'm going to set up my little Google Meet 
and my, my small group is going to come with, get on with me. We're going to have our meeting. We're going to put our earbuds in. By the way, I go to Amazon because if you go to the actual place online, they're out, they're back ordered. But go to Amazon and type in 55 cent earbuds. They come in a baggie. So worth it. If the kids don't have their own, you can just give it to them and they can keep it. But anyway, put in their earbuds and we'll be doing our guided reading and they'll practice how to get on and we'll be doing it while I'm there in the classroom. And then when they're at home, it'll be so much easier for them to try. And all the rest will be doing whatever you normally want children to do. Unless it's centers with small groups, you're going to have to maybe change that up. So I'm going to have them go to my Bitmoji classroom, which I'm so excited and do things that way. So I'm going to have got a reading and I'm going to do it with Google Meet. Isn't that great? Try it. Maybe you already thought of it and I'm not that clever, but wow. Okay. I have some other things that I want to cover, but not today. All right. Thank you for tuning into the Fox's Den and going on one of my adventures. You have a healthy and happy and safe day. Bye.